So what's FUD? How do you combat it? What's with the FUD surrounding Walton Chain and NEO? Thanks for tuning in to Ready Set Crypto. This is your brain on blockchain. The term FUD, or fear, uncertainty, and doubt, refers to the spreading of false or misleading information by foes of a movement or organization with the aim of undermining confidence in a project. It's a close cousin to gaslighting and concern trolling. The term is popular in cryptocurrency circles and for good reason. A lot of the critiques of Bitcoin in the mainstream media over the years certainly reek of FUD. The setbacks such as a sharp price correction or a government writing regulations are often exaggerated as fatal blows. I chalk it up to ignorance if these way premature obituaries for Bitcoin weren't so searingly gleeful in tone. That said, setbacks do happen, and simply reporting incremental bad news or long-term challenges is not spreading FUD. Thunderstorms expected today is the weatherman's way of helping us to avoid getting drenched or electrocuted. It's not some fiendish plot to trick us into spending the rest of our lives indoors. Yet, if you read crypto Twitter or Reddit or join a Telegram or Discord group, you'll see there's a noisy contingent out there who view the world through a lens of bad faith and seldom bother to read an article past the headline. Cryptocurrency is, all things considered, good for the world. I believe this space has a bright future. But I also know there's going to be bumps along the way, or rather, elephant-sized potholes, the kind that can wreck your front tire. Keeping a spare in the trunk is not falling for FUD, it's prudent risk management. Volatility, scaling difficulties, and hostile governments are all real. They can't destroy a truly decentralized network like Bitcoin, but they can slow adoption, stimmy innovation, and make life miserable for individuals who are invested more than they should have. To simply note that these problems exist or they're hard to solve it does not imply they are insurmountable, and ignoring them won't make them go away. So let's talk about two very recent FUD storms affecting coins that I disclose I am an investor in, but have not been paid to talk about in any way. If you weren't following the crypto news last week or didn't see my video on it, Walton Chain had a few bad days as they went through a public shaming. A few mistakes on their Twitter caused a sell-off of $120 million. It was a pretty epic FUD storm over a mistake that will likely be forgotten in the long term. As I said in my video, hardly anyone will be talking about it anymore as of this week. And I was definitely right about that yesterday when the Walton Chain team announced through their Twitter and through a Medium article that they would be signing a strategic partnership with Alibaba Cloud in order to pursue the areas of smart city solutions and blockchain application schemes. The partnership would focus on promotion of Walton Chain blockchain technology to achieve the municipal and commercial IoT coverage, establishment of new smart cities, and construction of smart city schemes and their application, resource allocation optimization and achievement of smart resource allocation through the blockchain and Internet of Things technology. Now, people were quick to point out that the deal was an official, Alibaba hadn't confirmed it, it's not technically Alibaba because it's Alibaba Cloud, which is pretty typical FUD talk. Though it's a little bit warranted with Walton because they did jump the gun a bit back in January with their announcement of a partnership with the China Mobile IoT Alliance, but still, they wouldn't go through the trouble of announcing this only to redact it later because it wasn't true, right? Well, that seems to have happened. As of this morning, the announcement disappeared from Twitter and was replaced with a tweet that read, due to the current uncertainty of blockchain policies, our team has decided that in the future, we will announce major partnerships depending on the situation so as not to affect the real implementation of blockchain technology. So what does that mean? Why is that so vague? Did the team lie? Was the partnership fake? Are they a bunch of scammers like BitConnect? See, that's the kind of questions you'd ask if you did nothing but follow the herd mentality and drink the FUD Kool-Aid. To become smart money, you need to get away from just reading headlines, just reacting to the first thing you see, and diversify your news sources. Unfortunately, this news is very fresh, so we don't have a lot of sources to draw from here, other than people going absolutely ballistic on Twitter and Reddit, which is of no help. So let's fall back on our critical thinking here and try to see through the FUD miasma clouding our vision. Remember that Walton is based in China and Korea, and the former is important because of the government running it and the overall treatment of blockchain technology there. Remember that the Communist Party in China, the central people's government, is very authoritarian, especially with information. What that government says goes in China, which may be hard for those of us in the West to comprehend. So companies, especially startups with blossoming tech, such as distributed ledger technology, need to play nice with the government if they want to succeed long term. I've defended NEO in a similar manner. 
Those playing nicely with the central people's government are going to do much better when China comes out in favor of blockchain, or rather develops their own brand of blockchain, similar to how they police the internet. Imagine buying into utility stocks just as they were beginning to connect a country. The very first utility poles connecting communities. If you believe blockchain is the future and you look at recent partnerships, Walton Chain is laying the foundation to lead China and much of Southeast Asia into a new technological era. Okay, so how does this relate to the Walton partnership switcheroo that's causing a FUD firestorm? Well, for one, the partnership has been confirmed to be intact by several of the team representatives, the Walton Knights, on the Telegram. Of course, that's not official just yet, but so far as I'm concerned, nothing regarding the validity of the partnership has changed. Secondly, given the vague nature of the frankly odd timing of it, it's not a big stretch of the imagination to think that a government official contacted the team and told them that they need to go through official channels in addition to removing their announcement until it was properly sanctioned by the government. Yes, that is speculation, but it's based on pretty solid conjecture given that that's how the People's Republic of China works. Anyone proposing a different theory, especially one about how Walton is a scam company and they made up the partnership, deserves to be frowned upon for spreading irrational FUD. So I think that's the deal here. They're just likely playing nice with the government, nothing's really changed, and like I said in my last video about Walton, you're not the customer. They don't care about how you feel. They're a B2B company and they're much more interested in building business relations and being a leader in supply chain blockchain. And they don't do that by creating fake partnerships. With their mainnet releasing soon, anyone selling now will likely regret it as the price is likely to recover once staking is implemented. Always remember before you sell out of a position, ask yourself why is the person on the other side of this transaction buying and what do you think they aim to gain? Okay, so let's look at another recent example of a FUD storm. Of the top 10, NEO has taken a huge beating recently, currently at negative 27% for the past seven days. Let's break down what happened and why I'm not concerned. The FUD started with a blog, Store of Value, and their article, NEO is a multi-billion dollar disaster, which accused NEO of having remarkably poor performance, especially considering it advertised having a thousand transactions per second. Primary evidence presented by the author was that of the huge block time differences during the recent ICOs, which are notoriously high traffic periods. Furthermore, they highlighted the lack of features and poor code of NEO's smart contract ecosystem. Then a few days later, NEO had a two hour long block, which is an abnormally long time and occurred with no ongoing ICO. In response to the store of value article and the two hour outage, Bitcoin.com published an article, NEO is either a raging success or a total disaster, which questioned NEO's technical prowess and conjectured that it was a billion dollar disaster. Soon after, a Bitcoin.com and blockchain engineer, Eric Wall, tweeted out a 16 tweet long rant about the ineffectiveness of NEO's consensus algorithm, delegated Byzantine fault tolerance. His criticisms were also directed at the single node failure bug and how expensive it was to deploy a smart contract on the system. The team soon responded to the two hour outage, saying that a single node went down, causing a deadlock in the consensus process. A patch was in the works and it should resolve it soon. Da Hung Fei, the founder of NEO, then responded to Eric with a statement refuting criticisms or clarifying their positions. I'll link it in the description. Essentially, he eloquently and respectfully responded to each of Eric's claims and criticisms. It became quite clear, especially once Eric released an apology today, that his Twitter rant was predicated on the R&D head Malcolm LeRider's post on Discord. His Twitter post thread assumes that based on Malcolm's simplified post in the Discord, that Neo's consensus will fall apart when one of the seven consensus nodes fails. If that were the case, as the Twitter thread states, the consensus algorithm would not be fault tolerant. But that's not the case. You can verify it yourself by looking at the code or referring to the documentation I link in the description. While there is an occasional problem with consensus, as the two hour downtime highlighted, this is another issue that is currently being patched by the City of Zion and Red for Sec in combination with the co-founder Eric Zhang. It's a simple bug that can be engineered out, not a fundamental problem with the delegated Byzantine fault tolerance algorithm. Furthermore, reading social media is not an effective way of finding a severe flaw in a blockchain project. Performing tests, documenting the failure, and performing a responsible disclosure to the maintainers about the project is infinitely more effective. No disrespect intended, but Malcolm was proven to be an ineffective communicator a few months ago with his cryptic tweets regarding the Microsoft competition and ontology 
that unnecessarily put people into a frenzy. We believe that there's a lot of work to be done before NEO is a fully capable smart contract and ICO platform. While the current state of NEO is less than optimal, the very same thing could be said about Ethereum when it can be brought to its knees by CryptoKitties. Now, in regard to both of these situations, I'd like to point out two things. First, any company that doesn't make mistakes publicly is simply hiding or not telling you the truth. Especially in the case of NEO, there's no way that a code review or multiple code reviews could prevent everything. Just look at Apple, where every release is littered with bugs. Would you say Apple is a garbage company then? Probably not. The second thing is that communication is paramount when it comes to anything that is now in the public eye. Hopefully these situations teach the Neo team and the Walton team that fully communicating issues as soon as possible and as clearly as possible is ideal. Now, with regard to FUD overall, there's still a lot of great debate that goes on on crypto threads, and I'm not saying they're all bad, but how many negative posts have you seen on the top of your favorite coin subreddit in the past few months? Negative news is too often frowned upon as FUD. Are people getting too caught up in the appreciation of their holdings rather than constantly evaluating project success and fundamentals to make good investment decisions? Probably. There needs to be a clear distinction between actual FUD and fake news rather than negative opinion or negative news. In this sense, the community needs to be less reactionary and more focused on the long-term goals of their investments and crypto overall. There should be room for criticism, negative news, and actual problems on projects. People should be more wary of FOMO propaganda purported by project owners and detest the whitewashing of real information that helps people understand their risk. As the ICO and cryptocurrency ecosystem develops in maturity, there should be standards of disclosure, which will help investors accurately measure the current risks in the progression of their chosen projects. The reality is we are likely far away from such a disclosure model. In the meantime, be rational, do your own research, and don't dismiss all negative news because it's bad for your ROI. In the same regard, always diversify your news sources and just think through stuff. Critical thinking is key. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button so you can continue to see high quality crypto analysis. And don't forget to hit the bell next to the subscribe button to be notified when we put out new videos. Additionally, check out the description for a link to our daily newsletter. Thanks again for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.